have put behind us the hideous chapter of the dark age of our industrial history, when any foul and gloomy shack was thought good enough for men to work in. We have grown up to realize the importance and the dignity of labor. In the 20th century, we know at last that a healthy, happy worker is a good worker. And even in the midst of the perils of our world war, we have now taken a giant step onward along the broad road of security and freedom for every subject of the British Empire. Gilmore British News is proud to be first to present on the screen the operation of a factory committee of management, a regular meeting of executives, management and staff to discuss freely any problem which affects the production of the factory and the conditions of the men and women who work in it. Across the table, this committee exchanges argument and ideas. They reason out their problems. Through this council, the least important operative can air a grievance or suggest an improvement. This factory has tried out the idea in actual working practice and decided that it is good. Let us put before you the views of the managing director, Dr. George Walpole. Such a council advises the management and a wise management works through it to discuss its plans with the workers. There is nothing in its makeup that interferes in any way with trade union arrangements or agreements, nor does it change in any way the authority of the charge hands or foreman or works manager, nor does it change the works discipline. All sorts of technical matters arise, rearrangement of work and equipment to increase output, ever better and better methods are sought and naturally and particularly do we study the suggestions of the workers themselves. Any man or woman on the staff is eligible for membership of this committee. The election is by secret ballot so that the staff can elect those they really believe best for the job without fear or favor. It's a waste of time trying to persuade your neighbor to vote for your own choice because you've got no means of telling what he puts on his paper. Now let's meet some of the members of this committee. Grace Carter, Welfare Supervisor. Charles Tayford, Turner. He's also Alternative Chairman. Dorothy Medcraft, Capstan Operator and Women's Shop Steward. David Sharp, Toolmaker and Toolroom Council Representative. Gladys Mears, Assembler and Fitting Shop Representative. Henry Crawford, Borer and Shop Steward. These are the committee members whom the staff approach on any point to be brought up for discussion at the next meeting. And so, while a shift is clocking off to go home, they can leave with a feeling that their interests are being looked after in this room within faint earshot of the hum of machines. This is the lubricant that oils the wheels of production, the cut-out friction between staff and management. I'll sign these minutes and <coughs> hand over the meeting to my co-chairman, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor. We will now take the next item on the agenda. It is preventable access. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with regard to preventable accidents, I would like to make a few suggestions. We all know that women are coming into ind industry in large numbers nowadays, and I feel they should have a period of initiation in which time they can be shown the machines which they will work and be shown any points of interest about those machines. Another thing, I suggest that it be made very clear to these newcomers that if they get into any difficulty with their machine, they do not try and rectify the trouble themselves. They must have skilled aid on the point. Mr. Chairman, after this meeting, I will undertake to inform all my foremen in a written note that this matter has come up at this meeting and that all every step should be taken Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I want to raise the question of shopping hours. One of the chief causes for absenteeism is that women have to do their shopping just when they can. I'm sure the majority of the women who have homes to run would be prepared to work longer in the evenings if they could have Saturday mornings or afternoons free to do their shopping. Here, here. That is very important, and I suggest that we ask the secretary uh, to bring it urgently to the notice of the subcommittee, which is discussing absenteeism this week. Is there any other business? No, 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 no. I 
Everybody plays me. A happy factory spells bigger production. Only with the great efforts British factory workers are making today can we hope to win the war. So it's only right and just that their reward should be a victory with happiness and security. The Committee of Management aims at giving to labour the fruits of prosperity. The days are gone forever when life in a factory meant ill-paid drudgery and wretchedness. Now we stride forward again towards the ideal of good living. A future in which our children's children shall never know the awful dread of evil conditions, unemployment and poverty.